So one of the great things about working in AirPro is we get to see a ton of different applications. So we get to build wheels like this and wheels like all of these. These fans right now are going into active projects and they're all very different. So why would you choose one that looks like this or one that looks like that? Well, in this video, we seek to answer that question. These are laid out in order of efficiency. So if it's on this side, it's very high efficiency. If it's on that side, it's the lowest efficiency. So we're gonna start off just breaking down what is the efficiency of each of these wheel types? And so at start, we have a BCHS product, and this is our backward curved high volume product. It can reach 81% static efficiency. Next, we have the BCMS product. And so this product down here is also backward curved. It can also achieve 81% static efficiency. This product is our next most efficient, the BCLS product. This one can achieve 79 to 80% efficiency. This product is our BIHS line. So it's a backward inclined blade and its max efficiency is approximately 77%. Now we move back to the RTHS design. So this is a radial tipped blade and it can achieve up to a 76% max efficiency. Then we move to a backward curved pressure blower, and this one can achieve up to 72, 73% efficiency. Now we come back to the industrial exhaust air handler, and this one has a backward inclined blade, and it can achieve up to about 69% max static efficiency. Next is the HPSM. So this is a shrouded radial pressure blower. And this one can achieve up to about 67% static efficiency. And then we get into our open radial. This is a narrow open radial pressure blower. And this one can do 63, 64% static efficiency. And another open radial, but this one is medium, uh, medium width. And so this one can do also about 64% static efficiency. So as I'm standing at a wheel back here, they can only do 64% efficiency. And I started with a wheel that can do 81% efficiency. Why would anybody ever buy this? If you can get that, which can do a lot more volume, a lot more pressure, a lot less power, why wouldn't everyone do that? Well, it comes down to a couple of things. One is, what do you need the fan for? So what is this wheel being designed to do? A second is, what is the wheel being designed to give you in terms of performance? So what is it doing in terms of the application? Is it moving clean air, saturated gas, abrasives in the airstream? Maybe it's uh, light particulate loading going through the fan. Given those four different characteristics, you're going to choose a different wheel based on which one you need. And then also the second piece, volume, pressure. Are you dealing with a really high volume and a really low pressure? You'll likely be more with one of the more efficient types of fans if it's a clean air application. Or are you dealing with high pressure, low volume? Then you're gonna go for a fan back here. So speaking of that, What's this one doing? I would estimate this fan, being a pressure blower, is probably doing approximately 60 inches of static pressure, and its volume is somewhere in the three to 4,000 CFM range. And so this is a low volume, high pressure combination, and that's why the wheel looks like this. It's got a decent amount of volume going through it, but it's very high pressure relative to its volume. This little guy, going to be doing a decent amount of pressure, but it'll be about half the pressure that this one's doing at the same speed because it's half the diameter. So this one's going to be doing 30 inches of static pressure, but its blades are so narrow, it's probably doing somewhere around 500 CFM. Both of these being straight radial can handle more, uh, more materials in the airstream. 
If you've got grains going through your Airstream that might get caught up on a backward curve blade, you'd want to put them in a fan like this that has radial blades that are actually going to expel that material and not get buildup on them. This one has a shroud on the front and a back plate on the back. Now that allows it to contain the gas a little bit better and move it at a little higher efficiency, but it's very similar to these two. Now this one being shrouded and having a back plate will have a curve that rises and then falls. So it's not going to constantly rise all the way back to the origin, which means that it can't truly be labeled as a surgeless design. Now, for the most part, you won't experience surge with a pressure blower like this because it's dealing with low volumes, higher pressure, and most of the time you don't get those stray gases going through that are going to cause your fan to pulse. Whereas these ones can be labeled as surgeless designs because they're open radial and therefore their curve is going to constantly rise to shut off. So you can run these across the entire spectrum of the curve without having any fear of the fan pulsing. Now this one is an industrial exhaust air handler. So you would choose a wheel like this because you're going to be dealing with particulates in the gas stream. And it's backward inclined, so it's going to do a decent job with efficiency, but it's kind of that middle ground product along with the RTHS wheel. These are more those middle ground products that can handle some stuff in the gas stream, but it's going to do it a bit more efficiently. This one is probably doing somewhere around 10,000 CFM at 35 inches of static pressure, somewhere in that type of range. This one what we're looking for in this kind of a design is the highest efficiency we can get in an application where we've got a lot of pressure and very little volume. So we're just trying to maximize our efficiency, but we're not trying to move any abrasives or particulate through this one because it's a backward curved blade profile. And that backward curved blade profile tends to build up if you have particulate coming through a fan like this. So if you have particulate in the gas stream, one like this with the radial tip profile. This is the best kind of choice for handling quite a bit of grains in the airstream, something where you could have, it's not abrasive material, but it is a lot of material coming through. It could tend to build up on a backward curve profile, but it won't build up on this radial tip profile because the way it's designed to rotate this way and sling the material off of these blades as it's coming through the fan, and keep it from building up. But all the while, it's doing it in the mid 70s on static efficiency. So this is a very high efficiency option when you have to move some particulate or you're in a saturated gas stream. Now this backward inclined at 77% efficiency isn't quite as impressive in its efficiency as the backward curves, but it does have flat blades, which makes it easier to manufacture. And so this fan is going to cost less comparably with these ones because the cost of manufacturing is less. So if you need that standard clean gas application, this is a really good fan for that, especially when you're looking at a difference of say 4% static efficiency, and maybe it doesn't gain you a motor horsepower size. So maybe this one, I would estimate this one somewhere around 25,000 CFM at 10 inches of static pressure. It may be higher in volume, a little lower in static pressure, but based on how wide it is, we can estimate how much air it's doing. Based on how narrow it, or based on the diameter, we can estimate what its pressure is. So again, the wider a fan, the more volume it's doing, the larger in diameter, the more pressure it's doing. So this one is a relatively narrow backward inclined and its diameter is about average. I would guess this one's about 36 inches in diameter. So this one is doing a bit lower volume to pressure ratio than most wider backward inclined wheels. Now this one at 79% static efficiency boasts a really high efficiency relative to its volume to pressure ratio. So a 
as you can see, this one is really narrow, but they're backward curved blades. So this one can handle a higher pressure profile while doing a bit lower of a volume profile relative to it at very high efficiencies. But this is a clean gas application fan. You don't want to put these backward curved blades into an environment where they're going to get a lot of buildup or abrasive materials through, because again, that could destroy your blades or lead to buildup on the back of it. Now this one's a BCMS. So it, while being a good bit smaller in diameter than this wheel, is wider. So what that tells us again is, this is moving a bit higher volume relative to its pressure. Now its pressure profile is still pretty large for a backward curve product, but it can handle a larger volume with that pressure, sorry, volume with that pressure, and it's going to do it also at a very high efficiency of around 80, 81%. So these two, you just pick them based on where you fall in terms of your volume to pressure ratio. And the same with our most efficient product. You're going to pick this when your volume is relatively high compared to your static pressure. And it's going to do it at an extremely high static efficiency of about 81%. So recapping the product lines, you've got about a 17, 18% differential in static pressure from the most efficient to the least efficient. But there's a reason for why each one was chosen. So knowing that there's a 17% differential in static efficiency from this product all the way down to that product, you now know a little bit more about why each one is selected. You know the applications that they're going into, and hopefully it can help you make the right selections moving forward.